and, and welcome to this OpenShift Commons briefing um, today. We're really pleased to have with us um, Daniel Hansen from Cisco to talk about um, OpenShift on OpenStack and some of the work that he's been doing um, as a contributor to OpenShift in the area of HA deployment and um, puppet scripting, as well as to give you some of his experience about deploying OpenShift on OpenStack um, at Cisco, where he is gainfully employed. And I've had the great pleasure of working with Daniel and giving presentations um, at OpenStack summits um, to other groups within Cisco, and he's a wonderful speaker. What we're going to do is let him give a little bit of his presentation so you get a taste of what's going on there. He can talk through that. And then we'll do a little bit of Q&A and open it up for discussion. And somewhere around halfway through this call, um, Ken Owens, who's the CTO of Cisco Cloud Services, is going to be joining us. And he can tell us a little bit more about um, the roadmap ahead for Cisco and how they're seeing um, the use of OpenShift um, at Cisco and how it plays out there. So I'm going to let Danian, um talk a little bit here now, and thank you very much um, for offering to brief all of the other members of Commons today. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Diane. Uh, as Diane mentioned, my name is Damian Hansen. I'm a software engineer with Cisco. I'm part of our CTO organization. Uh, I've been working with and uh, contributing to uh, OpenShift for, uh, for about a year now. Uh, as uh, Diane mentioned, some of my initial work uh, was, uh, was related to um, automation aspects of, of OpenShift um, using Puppet um, and then enhancing that further by including uh, high availability aspects for OpenShift deployments so that you know, key OpenShift services um, can scale and, uh, and are resilient. And uh, I've also been working with, uh, with OpenStack uh, since the Diablo release and so uh, what I've also done is uh, work within Heat uh, to orchestrate uh, OpenShift uh, deployments within OpenStack, and, and we'll talk more about that here. <clears throat> so I put together just a few slides to, to help kind of guide the conversation, but this is uh, very much uh, an open dialogue, so please jump in, ask any questions, and um, you know, let's make this interactive. Uh, and so for folks unfamiliar with uh, with OpenStack or specifically Heat, uh, you know, Heat is, is kind of that integration point between OpenStack and, and OpenShift. And so, um, you know, if you want to deploy uh, OpenShift in an OpenStack environment, there's definitely different ways of skinning that cat. Uh, the way that uh, that that I thought was best uh, a year ago and where I put my efforts around was by using this orchestration service, uh, AKA Heat within OpenStack. And what that allowed us to do is to, uh, to provide a very simple format for users to deploy a, a multi-node OpenShift environment uh, very easily not having to go in and, and uh, monkey around with different settings for your different node types. Uh, it'll, it provides a very simple interface. You, you, know, you, you basically supply parameters to, uh, to the heat template. Um, and within a single command, you've got you know, the orchestration service that goes and does all the hard work for you. Um, and so, in addition to the presentation, I, I also pulled up uh, a demonstration that I put together probably about six months ago. So it is a little dated, but it, it still provides the concepts that are important to this discussion. Um, and again, just quick uh, overview of what he does. It's a, a service within uh, within OpenStack. You call it a service or, or a project within OpenStack and it is the orchestration service. So again, it interacts with all the different services uh, that make up the OpenStack uh, system and, um, and talks to those different API endpoints uh, to, to realize your workflow that you create, right? And so um, 
uh, we'll we'll again dive into um, oops, sorry here we'll dive into one of the uh, template examples so you could see how you know how it works and um, and again just kind of talk through it a little bit but uh, really quick, when when Heat was created, it was originally based off the uh, the Amazon CloudFormation API, and and it still supports uh, the CloudFormation API, um, but it also has its own native API, and that's you know, that's really where the focus of the develop, development is. And part of the features of Heat, it's not only to orchestrate um, the initial deployment of uh, whatever you want to orchestrate, typically, you know, a complex application, uh, but it also integrates with uh, Solometer, for example, to scale out that application. And here's just uh, the interface uh, to go ahead and, and access the heat templates that were created. Um, and if you want to, if you look at um, my browser here, you can actually just follow along. This is a, a a reveal presentation that I'm using. So if you go to danehans.github.io forward slash v3 underscore presentation uh, within your browser, you could actually move along at your own pace if you'd like. But uh, the the heat templates are hosted on uh, on GitHub within the OpenStack uh, repo. And um, you know the uh, the heat templates repo it has all sorts of different type of, of heat templates. And so whenever I'm actually wanting to create a, a new um, orchestration workflow for an application, I, I'll usually always start here to see what heat, uh, templates are available to, to, ba you know, to start my work from, you know, to, to leverage this, the work that's already been out there as a baseline instead of starting from scratch. Uh, there's also uh, a video that was put together on how to use uh, the heat templates for OpenShift. Daniel, I would just interrupt just for a second too. Sure, sure. The OpenShift Enterprise heat templates are now in, have been moved from the OpenStack repo into the OpenShift um, repository on GitHub. So if people are looking for the enterprise supported ones, they're, they're now under OpenShift on GitHub. The Fedora and CentOS ones are in the um, OpenStack repo. Yeah, and I'll dive into the heat templates in, in some more details too, uh, so everyone could see uh, see what's going on there. Um, but also, you know, I also added uh, this page here where you go to GitHub dot com and actually instead of the OpenStack heat templates repo you go to the OpenShift origin repo or maybe even start off at just the OpenShift um, repo and you can see all the different projects within the OpenShift repo that you can contribute to again the the particular project that I contributed to was uh, the the puppet modules um, for automating um, for automating OpenShift deployments and so, you know, take a look at the OpenShift repo and see how you can contribute. So there's a lot of different opportunities if it's directly with Origin or, or really any of the other associated projects uh, for, uh, for OpenShift. And if there's any, if I want to kind of throw it out there, any questions? Otherwise, I was going to, again, jump into a quick demonstration uh, so you could actually see what I'm talking about, um, as well as I was going to dive into one of the uh, one of the heat templates, so you just have a better understanding of um, of the template itself. Not, I'm not seeing any questions at this point in um, the chat, so why don't you go for that? Yeah, you bet. Okay, and the demo moves really quick, quick so I uh, I may pause it here and there, but. Um, uh, this is just really quickly heat temp how simple it is let me uh, go back here really quick we've got you know a heat template that uh, that a user supplies the parameters to 
um, you know, that basically tells Heat to go and talk to all the necessary OpenStack services to realize uh, the multi-node OpenShift uh, deployment. And I added this here just to, to emphasize, you know, there's a lot of different ways to interact with OpenShift. If you're familiar with uh, the, um, you know, the command line tools, IDEs, or through the web interface, this, um, this demonstration by the end will actually um, log into the web interface and show that particular example, how you interact with, uh, with OpenShift. But, you know, it really comes down to whatever the developer prefers uh, OpenShift provides uh, different ways to interact with it. So what you're seeing here is, uh, you know, is, uh, I'm, uh, I'm an uh, OpenStack user. I have an account. The OpenStack environment that that I'm using supports Heat, and so uh, when I interact with Heat, I use the Heat uh, commands. Uh, in this particular scenario I'm doing a stack create calling it OSO dash stack for OpenShift origin and then I uh, I specify the template file right and so this template file is something that um, that I would download and it's a template file from the heat templates repo and so I tell heat this is where the template exists and here are all the parameters that I'm gonna pass in to customize this particular deployment. Things like, you know, what SSH key pair am I gonna use? What DNS prefix do I wanna use within my OpenShift environment? What's the IP address or DNS names of my, or IP addresses of my DNS servers? Where's my NTP server? Um, all sorts of stuff. And again, we'll, we'll dive into uh, the parameters in more detail, uh, but pretty simple. You say, hey, heat, create this, uh, this stack, and here's a template file, here's the parameters. And uh, heat starts to create the, the stack, and as part of that creation process, uh, the template file consists of a bunch of resources. That's really what uh, a core concept within uh, within Heat. And so uh, this particular template has, gosh, what close to eight different resources, and it'll go through resource by resource and um, and let you know if that resource completed properly or if there's any issues or if it's in the process of. Uh, of completing that resource. And you see that uh, right now it's going through that process. And then a few minutes later, I do another heat resource list for my particular stack name, OSO stack. And you see that, let me move this arrow, you see that all the different resources created uh, successfully. And so if I do another heat stack list, uh, you'll see my OSO stack has uh, completed correctly. Now the next thing I'm doing, I kind of jumped through this because I wanted to make a very quick demonstration. This was for one of the OpenStack summits. Um, but something that I kind of just glanced through there didn't really even show is, okay, this, the stack's now created. What you would typically do then is do a, a heat stack show OSO stack or a Nova list and you would see um, the instance details or the virtual machine details that make up my OpenShift broker, my OpenShift nodes. And, um, and then I would capture that IP address of the OpenShift broker and use that to log into this web interface that you see right here. You know, and as part of, um, as part of that deployment, we also set up, you know, a username and password for the administrator so that, uh, so that now I have the IP address of my broker, and I have the uh, username and password to be able to log in. And again, this example shows the web interface. I could have very easily um, you know, used my client tools and interacted with the broker uh, from the command line or from an IDE uh, as well. So now I'm logged into the broker. Um, you know, I'm setting up my, my namespace. I'm adding my public keys. 
just some of the basic fundamental things we need to do to start interacting with a broker and, and creating uh, the applications. This example, I'm going to use uh, uh, Cake PHP application, and that source code is actually sitting on GitHub. So all I have to do is say, hey, OpenShift, the code sits uh, here at this GitHub URL. Go ahead and create the application. It gives me some information on username, password, so on and so forth. And let me go back here. And then it says, hey, application created successfully. And again, it gave me some of that feedback. So now I know the URL of my application and uh, open up a new tab. Boom, I'm at the Cake PHP home screen. Uh, and now I'm able to start working and customizing my application as needed. Um, so again, workflow. Pretty simple in the OpenStack environment, um, as long as, again, it needs to, to run heat, which most uh, uh, open, OpenStack cloud providers uh, support heat. I'm just pulling down uh, the heat template and I'm passing in the, the, um, uh, you know, the parameters for the template so that I could customize the, my deployment as needed. Um, and then heat does all the hard work for you log into the broker and set up some of your basic information like the namespace, the, the, uh, the SSH key you're gonna use, and then start deploying applications. So, um, and then the last piece of this is just to kind of go through the, the different cartridges, right? And I mean, this is the power of, of OpenShift is we don't have to build common applications from from scratch right so if it's a heat you know the heat templates we don't have to build it from scratch there's stuff out, out there already use it if you need to add to it then then add to it same with uh, the cartridges um, you know if, if there's if there's a cartridge out there that you need to add to it this is you know one of the great things about open source right is as even as I look let me jump to the heat templates um, you know, I haven't looked at the heat templates in a, in a little while because I've been working on other projects, but, you know, put a big smile on my face because I came back and I was like, wow, this has changed quite a bit over the last few months because Antoine A has come back here and said, oh, you know, let's add to the heat template, right? So um, under, the, under the OpenStack heat templates, um, I went to the path of OpenShift origin. Um, we could either go uh, Fedora or CentOS, and then there's different types of, of templates from HOT, which is a heat orchestration template format. That's a native format. There's also an AWS template format. And then there's different, uh, there's quite a few different um, heat templates out there for, uh, for OpenShift under Fedora. Um, and I- Damian, yeah. can I ask a, a quick question here too? Sure. Are these heat templates um, that are in the origin one, are they um, HA? templates or do they have to be reconfigured to be HA? So these are not HA. I believe if we go to the heat templates it, um, under the, um, so I see the OpenShift origin templates here. Diane, did, was, it, was, it different, it was, was a, a different repo where the OpenShift enterprise. Yeah, so those under. ones ended, ended up under OpenShift and github.com OpenShift. And then um, I think heat templates in there or under extras. And they got moved semi recently. Ah, there they are. Okay. So oh, yeah, it looks like we have two different repos. Uh, if, uh, you know, if you want to work on the origin <coughs> templates, they're hosted out of the OpenStack uh, GitHub repo. And if you want to use the uh, enterprise uh, templates they're out of the OpenShift repo mm -hmm. and so um, these OpenShift enterprise templates the last that I saw they did have uh, HA options here yeah, and so I, I believe that's where the HA is and I think right you, and you can fork them and bring them into your own um, repos and and tweak them out as, as you see fit mm -hmm. But this is a really good starting place if you're trying to learn heat too. It, um, it's part of part of the reason I got into um, making sure that we had good heat templates is because I wanted to learn 
the, the heat templating um, syntax. So this is, you know, if you're if you're interested in heat, this is a great way. Um, it's also a great way to deploy OpenShift on OpenStack. Yeah, and, and uh, what I did now is I jumped to the uh, Puppet OpenShift origin uh, repo. And this is where I did quite a bit uh, of work. And as Diane mentioned, did, uh, did the original work for high availability. And I bring this up because what the heat templates actually do is they leverage um, these puppet modules. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of go through it in, in a little more detail. And so the nice thing about that is that if you're in an OpenStack environment, you want to use heat, uh, to orchestrate this you know, co complex deployment. Um, you can also say, well, I just want to leverage these puppet modules to automate the deployment of my multi-node, high availability, open shift environment. So you really have both options. Now, granted with heat, I showed you, it's a single command, right? You, I mean, you're pulling down the templates or you're, you're pointing to where the template is and you're just specifying some parameters to customize the, that orchestrated deployment. Uh, with Puppet, little more to it, not a whole lot, uh, but um, again, you you know, it gives you that power of saying, hey, I wanna deploy HA or not HA, here's the number of nodes that I want, here's you know, a lot of ways that you can customize a high, high availability deployment because when the high availability deployment was developed, Right, we're looking at each of those services that make up the system and making sure that they can withstand failure and so forth. And so there's a, a lot of different tuning that you could do to that. Um, but if you don't want to tune it, then you could just leverage the default options of either HA or non-HA. Um, and so that's why I bring up uh, this. And, and if you can even, um, I, I believe the latest OpenShift guides kind of walk you through the HA options as well as uh, when I go back, I want to say six, eight months ago, um, I went ahead and, and put together an HA guide um, under the Cisco documentation on how to deploy both options. If you want to deploy just using um, Puppet or if you want to deploy using Heat. And so you could just simply Google Cisco OpenShift HA and you know, without a doubt, you'll see those uh, those two options for documentation. Um, so, Nanian, we've got yeah. one question here that I'm just going to ask sure. before it. What Joseph Collins asking? Um, he says, "I understand that we this might be difficult to answer the question since V3 is still in development. But from your perspective, do you see more of a Nova integration with Docker using Atomic instead of putting OpenShift into a VM instance?" And I think. It might be a good time to bring up Kubernetes and, and what we're doing there yeah, and, yeah. and how that kind of changes the game a little bit. Right. So um, there, there's a lot going on within, um, you know, within Docker and Kubernetes. And I'm actually part of a, a project called Kala um, that's containerizing um, OpenStack services using Docker and Kubernetes. Uh, there's a new project within OpenStack that started called Magnum, which is containers uh, as a service. Um, right now, I would see that it would be a similar workflow where we would go ahead and and say, let's deploy um, Nova instances that make up our OpenShift environment. Um, but that could change here in three months or six months with some of these these new projects, and specifically Magnum. So if you haven't looked at Magnum, I, I would highly encourage you to uh, to go launchpad.com slash Magnum and take a look at the project. It's hosted out of Stackforge. So you go to github.com slash Stackforge. Uh, you could search for Magnum there and you'll see it as well. And, and there's just a flurry amount of development that's going on there. Oh, uh, Pradeep, who, uh, who's one of my peers, is focused on Magnum. Again, I'm focused on Kala, and so you know it's tough to tell. I mean, if you're if you're going to go ahead and deploy V3 today, then you, you know, again, I would say it'd be pretty similar. You'd use just a standard, uh, you know, libvirt uh, compute driver for Nova and deploy uh, V3 as um, 
as virtual machines. Um, uh, as you mentioned, the Nova Docker driver is is also in development. It's it's out of tree, and so it's also hosted in Stackforge. Um, and so you could potentially deploy it as containers. I think if you were going to go down that road, um, I would probably you know lean more towards Magnum, which is going to be a container as a service uh, service, and um, and then leverage the containers that make up the uh, the v3 deployment and deploy those specific components as containers so you know it, it's so it's, it's just hard to tell because we've got v3 that's just kind of still on the cutting edge you've got these different projects that i referenced within openstack that are on the cutting edge um, and so it really kind of depends on how those projects develop along with you know what your requirements are i mean if you're saying hey i need something that's solid um, and reliable today then you know, I'd say use the tried and true and, and use a standard Libvirt Nova doc, uh, Nova driver and deploy uh, as virtual machines. But if you want to be a part of like alpha code and on that bleeding edge, then look at things like Magnum and, and um, breaking apart V3 into the different containers and deploying those uh, using Magnum as, uh, as containers instead of virtual machines. Yeah, I know that it, it, when we were at um, OpenStack Summit in Paris a few months back, um, we were trying to dockerize each of the components of OpenShift and deploy that on OpenStack. And I think we have a little video of, of that attempt that I'll, I'll try and post the, the URL for that to the, the Commons group. People can take a look at that and, and we walk through it a little bit. But as, as Damien says, it's, it's really um, depends on whether you're going to go OpenShift Enterprise um, and use the tried and true methods, or if you really want to play um, with the the alpha versions, um, which we do in, actually encourage you um, testing it out and giving us your feedback um, and contributing to the the Origin v3 um, efforts. So uh, both both camps are are good things to test out. Um, and as I said, the the heat templates are are really good if you're starting to learn heat. Um, they're very clear and well documented. Um, if you're looking to get deeper into Kubernetes and some of the other things, um, playing with V3 and testing that out is also an awesome thing to do. Yeah, and as Diane mentioned, you know, I worked with uh, pretty closely with you know, some of the lead developers for V3 uh, last month or so in preparation for uh, the Paris Design Summit, the OpenStack Paris Design Summit, and um, and so yeah, I, I, you know. The, the developers that you know that are working on uh, v3 I mean they're looking for feedback like the feedback that I gave them um, you know so they're looking for the community to you know to test out the different kind of deployment scenarios and so forth so you know so that you know we make v3 better than what it is even today perfect I'm looking to see if there's any other questions in chat, and not not at the moment. So, we'll yeah. have to drive on. Okay. Yeah. So I was just kind of thinking, taking a couple minutes. I don't know if we still have time to, but uh, just really, uh, I was thinking, taking a couple minutes and just, you know, scanning through the the heat template so the folks can understand some of the core concepts of the template. Is that, that okay? Or great. that okay. would be great, actually. Okay. So again, we've got two different. Kind of collection of templates. If you if you want to work on Origin, they're hosted out of the OpenStack uh, Heat Templates repo. Or if you want to work on Enterprise, uh, let me go back here. It is in the OpenShift repo, and and it's OpenShift Heat Templates. So let's just take a look at Origin. So I'm at the OpenStack Heat Templates. Go to uh, the OpenShift Origin. Uh, let's go to Fedora 19. And we have different template types. Uh, let's go to the hot template again. Hot is the heat orchestration template format that's native to um, that's native to heat. And then we've got different types of templates. Uh, these are for scaling uh, scaling your, uh, your your orchestrated heat environment based on different triggers. Um, or we could just look at a simple OpenShift uh, template. Uh, it's in YAML format. So again, you would uh, most likely just um, clone 
the heat template repo uh, and then within the command line the heat command line or you could even do it from from horizon specify the path to this uh, to this template and then the other big part of of telling heat what to do is supplying the parameters and and here are all the parameters you see that the parameter uh, gives you a parameter name description type and default so you go through here and say mm, you know I like all the defaults or most of the defaults and it makes it even easier on you um, but uh, more than likely you're going to want to come in here and, and, and modify some of these parameters to your deployment needs you'll see that tons of parameters here and, and you know don't get overwhelmed by the number of parameters because again um, uh, most of these you won't even need to touch but just so you know understand that that concept of the parameters that's what we pass into into heat and then i talked to and showed you the the resources when i did that heat resource list and we saw the eight or ten different resources now heat basically chunks through this stuff and we're telling hey heat here are the resources that we want you to orchestrate the first one is the type of uh, os neutron security group so what we're uh, what we're telling heat to do is um, go and talk to Neutron and create a security group uh, for my OpenShift deployment. And then here's all the rules within that group um, so that we're locking down the OpenShift deployment. Uh, let's see what else. You know, now we're telling Heat, hey, create a key pair. Now start setting up the Neutron network for me, Heat create the ports the subnets the router all the the networking functionality that we need to provide networking connectivity to my open shift uh, nodes and broker and so forth and then here's a big piece uh, of this particular resource which is the os heat software config uh, and what we're doing is you see we've got a template here and it's really all it is is a, a you know, a bash script where we're saying, hey, go ahead and run Puppet. And here's all the different Puppet parameters that the bash script uses. And here's the Puppet module we want you to use. Here's all the different Puppet modules to install. And that's where I go back and say, hey, you really can, you know, automate your deployment in different ways that you would like. Um, you know, you don't have to use uh, heat, um, and heat is you know, the, the heat template is leveraging uh, the puppet module. Uh, so there's that consistency whether you're using heat or if you're just you know, automating your deployment using the puppet module um, that's hosted on the OpenShift repo. And um, you know we're then saying heat stand up uh, you know your your broker instance which is basically just a, a Nova a Nova server you know what image you want to use uh, the SSH key uh, what networks to attach it to and it just kind of goes on and on we kind of uh, go through a similar pattern for the node now that the broker's up and functioning let's start standing up nodes and then you know, there's basically a, you know an output um, so that when we do when when the heat uh, stack is created we then do a heat show stack oso stack and we actually get some feedback so we know again you know what's uh, what's the floating ip assigned to the instances and now i could actually bring up um, a browser and, and log into my broker if i'd like to so I mean, it's just kind of a quick rundown of of the heat template, um, and so you know we're taking you know we're taking an OpenShift environment that you know normally you would you know, deploy manually and simply just again providing some parameters to to customize the deployment and and letting heat do all the work for us so that we don't have to go in and tell Nova you know 
start up this number of instances telling uh, Nova to create these key pairs or telling Neutron to create all these network parameters. Um, you know, Heat's doing all that, that hard work for us. So Damien, um, do, do you have um, a final deployed topology at the end diagram or can you describe at the end of what you end up with? It's one of the guys on the call, the gals, um, is asking. I don't have a diagram in front of me, but um, let me go back to the video here. And I don't think I did a Nova list. Like in my in in this example um, and this heat template here, uh, this one here, this one is basically kind of like a, a kickstart environment. It's going to stand up a single broker, a single node. And then from that point forward, you could do one of two things or one of multiple things. You could add nodes to the environment manually. You can use the, the Puppet module to add additional nodes, or you can go ahead and, and basically copy this template and modify it and call it uh, OpenShift node.yaml. And instead of what Heat is doing here, where Heat's saying, let's create, uh, you know the broker node. Now we have um, a separate heat template just for adding a node, right? So instead of uh, again creating the broker and the node, th this template here really is kind of how do you kind of kickstart your OpenShift environment from that point forward? Manually add nodes, um, use the Puppet module to um, to automate adding nodes or go back here and say, let me just modify or, or copy this template over and modify it to, to create a very simple template focused on um, just adding a node to the environment. So, yeah, you've got a few different options, but from a topology standpoint, it would be pretty simple. Um, you would have, you know, you'd have a, a Neutron network, it could be the 10 dot network that uh, the broker and, and the node and any additional nodes attached to. And then, as you saw, we're setting up a floating IP as well. And so um, we would then go ahead and map that private Neutron network, which consists of you know, uh, the Neutron router and then the Neutron virtual ports that the broker and the nodes attach to. Um, you know, with the, with the floating IP, we would then say, hey, Neutron router, um, go ahead and, and NAT these public addresses uh, from your public network to these private addresses to the broker so that we now expose the broker to the outside world. So, um, the, <coughs> as, as the gentleman on, on chat pointed out, um, Horizon, ha it does have a, a, the ability to show, show that visually, but this is actually um, a, a movie that we made a few months back. So um, I'm pretty sure this doesn't exist in, in physical form anymore. Um, Merkel's now asking, um, is now saying that um, they have a project to make a heat deployment um, for on CloudWatt, uh, a French foreign cloud based on the OpenStack trunk. So they're going to be doing this soon. So hopefully um, we can get your feedback on that and um, learn some more from, from you guys. We'd love to have you on. and. Um, showing off what you're doing there. That would be great fun. Um, we're probably, what I'm interested in doing um, out of this uh, session is, is setting up um, a mailing list for people who are in particular interested in learning more about OpenShift on OpenStack. And so I will set that up and send you guys who are participating today um, and others the, the, the sign up for that mailing list um, where you can share some of your insights here. Um, they, as, as we have talked about a little bit, V3 is moving in, in, in directions um, that are sort of a, a little bit more Kubernetes um, and uh, maybe Nova driven. And so, but that is still a, a little ways out. So the OpenShift Enterprise and the OpenShift Origin heat templates, again, really are um, your best bet for um, testing and deploying um, on on OpenShift, um, on OpenStack these days. So I was 
I'm hoping we would have Ken Owens join us. Um, it looks like he's not going to make the call today to give us a little bit of insight into um, Cisco's roadmap. Uh, he was due up a few, mu few minutes back. Um, I, I think that what we've what we've covered today is, is quite a bit in terms of Heat and Puppet and the work that um, Damien has done um, on OpenShift and contributing back to OpenShift. It's been um, an amazing year, really getting the contributions and getting Cisco on board. Um, Cisco's done a lot of work, not just on OpenShift, but um, on OpenStack as well, and um, contributing to Koala and Magnum and a number of the, the Google open source project. So we really um, look forward to working more with everybody um, on the Cisco team. And thank you very much for, um, for having taking the time today to do this. Um, really uh, a big thank you to, to Danian um, for all of his efforts and, and for Ken and Keith and all of the other folks at Cisco that are, are working on um, making OpenShift part of the Cisco cloud. Um, we're looking forward to learning a lot more from you all. And uh, if there's no other questions, you might let uh, Damien get back to um, contributing on to all of those wonderful open source projects. So thank you very much, Damien. Do you have anything else that you want to say? No, that's uh, that's about it. So appreciate the time and uh, and uh, yeah, I think just in general, you know, jump into the code if it's. Uh, OpenShift or, or Heat and and um, you know start working with it and and contributing because that's what you know that's what this is all about right yeah absolutely and, and um, I I think the interesting thing from from our perspectives is is how much cross community collaboration there really is between the OpenStack and OpenShift and Kubernetes and Puppet communities and so um, this makes for some really interesting dialogues between all of the projects and um, within the different customers and contributors. So it's been, it's very interesting. We hope to bring more of these conversations here to um, the Commons briefings. And there will be another one next week on um, Java workflows that Aaron Gupta is putting together for us. So if you're around, please join us for that. So thanks, everybody. And we'll talk to you all again soon.